everybody. Welcome to Ray's Mundane. <laughs> Was that audible or not? <laughs> um, hello everybody. Uh, today we're doing a uh, longer little bit of a conversation between me and Omar here. Omar aka Her Ex. Would you like to introduce yourself on this channel for the first time? Yes, definitely. First of all, I am very excited to be here. I actually had a Joe Rogan slot on this exact hour, but I canceled it completely because there are certain priorities in life that you have to take, and this is far more of a priority. So, yes, uh, my name is Her Ex, uh, aka Omar at this point. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about Raz God's or Ray's God, whichever way you want to say it, his forced experience, which is which is going to be quite an insightful conversation, I believe. And I'm also excited to hear about uh, your transformation that you've gone through in the past like week and a half, two weeks. You used to have long hair like mine, and now you're, you're rocking the short hair. This must have been something happened there. Oh, definitely. Yes, there was. Uh, but how about we get into your thing, and then if yeah. we have time at the end, we can always we can always switch it around to me, brother. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. All right, let me just... Double check one more time that we're fucking recording this, all right? Hold up. Sounds good. All right, that would, yeah, that that looks that looks good to me. Let's continue. <laughs> so, should Hang on, I before get started we get into it, where where in the world are you right now? They everyone knows I'm in Australia, but you're in a fucking middle of a uh, traveling at the moment. Well, right now I am in Medellin, Colombia. I'm living on the strip, which is extremely like right next to the whole party scene. Terrible if you want to get some sleep. Uh, but yeah, I'm out here just doing a quick, a quick travel around South America. Uh, next stop will be the Amazon rainforest. Uh, probably get oh, some shit. cool footage out there. By the way, I did get some volcano footage for you. Oh, you I did? just haven't had Fuck a computer. Yeah. yeah it, oh yeah, erupting and everything. I was on the mount of the volcano while it erupted in Guatemala. No shit. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah, so don't worry. There'll be some of that for your new upcoming music videos for sure. Hell yeah. And I'll get some on Amazon Rainforest yeah, as man. well. Also, just quickly, I was going to say, if you can turn your phone long ways, it'll probably look better. Like this one? Wait, no, that didn't do anything. No, I turned it back. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry I think it's just man. the orientation of the way I've got Discord at the moment. But anyway, let's let's jump into it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, for those who don't know, you went out to do a forest retreat, right? Yeah. What was it? An entire week of silence? It was uh, 10 days. 10 days of silence. Yeah. Okay. 10 days of silence. So mm. where was your mentality before going on? the forest trip my mentality was like spread everywhere across everything like wanting to get shit done but also not knowing how and just like distracted by the world that was literally like my space beforehand distracted by the world what what do you think were the things that was quote-unquote distracting you like all things to do with my 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 ego it was addicted to a lot of things like the things I'd said before like well my actual addictions like weed and pornography and stuff like that were obvious ones to me but there was a lot of things underlying that like just like kind of general greed and wanting to feel kind of like satisfied with myself kind of a pleasure seeking there was a lot of that in a lot of my activities like even just planning ahead with the music or like figuring out what I want to do, it was kind of being infected by like wanting to achieve things and wanting stuff for myself. And that was mm -hmm. kind of something that was really hindering me because the, whenever I've, whenever big things have happened for me, it's become, it's come out of me like not doing it just for me. I, I, I would just be expressing it something purely or like working with other people, but it's never about like a, me and wanting things. But I noticed like the more I spent in the world and being distracted by shit the more i was like led by my ego it was making it stronger almost so when you talk about like certain accomplishments accomplishments that you had in, in your life so far mm. you said that you were like seeking some type of like uh what was it like um attention or goals i guess that you were trying to like greed or or however yeah. you want to put it yeah yeah 
were, did you have this before becoming and, and at least like before good night? Did you have those thoughts before good night or did they come once you started obtaining goals? No, it was more, wait, the, the like, mm, it's a mixture. Like I, they were there before probably more so. And it like, it took a song like good night, which like, I didn't even really think good night was that big of a deal of a song. It was just like a little one I'd made like just kind of exp I remember I told you it was I made that song after fucking seeing like something of like my ex-girlfriend with like her new partner oh, and it was just like yeah it was just like some odd feeling of like I didn't know what it was I just needed to express it and yeah I didn't think that song was shit but when it came out it just went crazy and it was like just weird to me thinking that like this had nothing to do with me planning anything or making any goals or putting anything like trying to make something of myself for the future but I do re see a lot of that like constantly come back and infect my mind space in the sense of like, I want to make something out of this or I want to make sure like I don't, you know, like, I, and I feel like that's something I need to get past because I don't even believe in there being a me, which I, I know we've talked about briefly before, but it's hard to explain. But yeah, I don't think like the, the reason I don't think there's a me is because everything I am comes to me out of a relationship with other people. So I'm really just an amalgamation of, everyone I know so when I get in that mind space of needing to prove myself without thinking about it's actually to prove like everyone's worth then I'm like disconnected from myself almost does that make sense I think to a certain extent could you just uh, elaborate on it just a little bit more any part which part in particular well I feel like because obviously you know you're your own specific uh entity but what do you think like when other people are involved in your journey that it starts almost making you more fulfilled or if anything uh, more whole of a person yeah yeah by, by involving people yeah yeah because okay so say for example you say like obviously i'm my own entity like from my end it doesn't seem so obvious in the sense that like i know that every like everything i've say for example even good night that seems to me like I could say I produced that song, I sung that song, I mixed it, I did all of that. But really, the, what like what was in that song? What was in that song was like a feeling that came from a relationship that I shared with another person. And without that other person, that feeling would have never existed. So it's like realizing that anything that comes to me, comes to me is only through my relationship with the world. So there's not really a, a me of myself. And so, okay. therefore, when I, I make more collaborate, say, for example, well, Multilinear and all the albums where I've, like, collaborated with a bunch of people, like you and Balto and Minimum Wade and all of that, like, that is just a better representation of how I see myself. Because I see myself as the parts of all of you that have added to me and combined and made us who we all are, rather than being, like, separate people who just kind of... Yeah, to me, it seems better when there's everyone's involved in something because it shows actually the reality of the thing because everyone's always involved in everything. Nice. No, I love that. Uh, just curious, uh, do you, because I'm sure all the, all the fans would like to know, um, did you know if your ex ever heard the song Goodnight? I have no idea. I really ha I haven't spoken to her in like, three years probably like at least six months before that song and seeing that picture or whenever that was and i like i've messaged her just being like i hope you're all good or like would you ever want to catch up but like she did not have gotten but never gotten back to me so i really have no idea but i kind of like it that way music? yeah yeah i was making music while i was with her but she did i don't know she she liked half of it but for example i'd made she is while i was with her that was like the first kind of big song. It didn't blow up until like, blow up for me until like two years later. But I made that song while I was with her and like she didn't really like it. So, so yeah, she was kind of like, eh, about my music. As opposed to Anya wow. who fucking loves my music. <laughs> See, this, this is an interesting, interesting perspective. It's kind of like one, one was a definitely less of like supportive of the music and then the other one is more supportive how do you how do you see one or like how do you see the difference in 
someone being supportive towards your music and then someone not i mean the 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 journey of the music and everything is like one of the biggest things in my life so it's 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 almost necessary like if Anya didn't like my music it wouldn't work like it works you know what i mean and I, simultaneously i don't think the old relationship could have ever worked because she didn't like the music you know because and the music and myself are so inseparable like apart from the kind of spiritual and religious aspects that you and i talk about that's like the number one in my life number two immediately is the music and everything that has to do with that so yeah and anya accepts both those like yeah the, the, yeah anyway it's not so much about that but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no 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 definitely whoa we'll hop into it i don't know i just found it really interesting because i think i went through something very similar where yeah. uh some of my past partners like you know i would write songs about them and then they would just dislike them or be like oh that's cool you know like the oh you know getting that reaction yeah. and it's just like it's really piercing to your heart because you know how much time and effort yes, and emotion man. you you put into it but uh but yeah, yeah man, that was we'll exactly about... it with that situation like it's the same as what i think you're saying like the song she is obviously she was the she in the sense that like that was the relationship at the moment where i like the main lines of the song is like peace of mind peace of time to be alone and still like i the part of that the relationship that i needed to exp rather the feelings i was feeling in, in that relationship that i was trying to express in that song were like the fact that i find it very hard to be with another person one on one for such an extended period and we were living together at that point for like 9 months so I like, it's a, it's a real struggle for me not to have that al alone space to really be alone and stew. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that, that was really me trying to express something. So to have that kind of be like, she didn't really like it. It was, I don't know. I don't think she actually probably didn't like the song so much. She probably just didn't, felt uncomfortable with me expressing the fact that like I had to be alone, which makes sense in a, a relationship. It, it does make sense. But at the same time, like they... Like, that's the hard thing about being a musician is you can't allow yourself to be closed off by, like, yeah. certain, like, not being able to share information. Like, you do have to be fully transparent, I feel like, to an extent, so that other people around the world can really resonate mm. with what you have to say. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man, I could I could go on, on and off about this one particular song, but I know that we, uh, most people came in here for the Forest experience, so... Do you mind you, if I ask you the next question? Yeah, I, either way, bro, I'm, I'm interested to hear if you've got more specific stuff that relates. But yeah, you lead, you lead. Oh, no, no, no. Well, maybe one other thing. Yeah. It's just that, like, do you feel as if when you were doing, like, the music, you, it's like the same exact song, like, we'll say She Is, for example. So She Is, two years ago, had zero plays on Spotify. I don't even, like, SoundCloud, whatever. But then, like, you showed her the song do you feel as if if you would have shown her the song with the million views i'm sure the song has now or listens do you feel like the fact that it has a million views by other people and appreciated by other people would change her perception the song has not changed but only the views of how other people view your music I don't, how do you think I that would i think it'd be more so like that that would I think more so, if, if anything, if she was to hear the song now, it would just be the fact that we aren't in a relationship and she has the space to just hear it as an actual song of its own. And she would be like, yeah, sure, it's a, it is a good song. But the, 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 like the million streams would bolster that, of course, but I think it was more to do with just the fact that she was too close to who I was and what the song represented for her to be able to like it. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, is like sometimes I think in multilinear, mm. when I was listening to it at least, there is a certain uh, vulnerability, but I feel like it's sometimes hidden beneath uh, slight metaphors or like, like maybe a little bit of. I feel like now that makes a little bit more sense with the certain relationship yeah. or situation you were in. That's a good. Was it kind of like yeah. that? Yeah, that's a very good observation, and I wouldn't have even put it into words like that until you've said it. And yeah, that's exactly right. Even now, I'm not always 100% comfortable with saying how I feel, so I often hide a lot of it in metaphors and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always thought that, like, sometimes when you write it, like, sometimes if you're trying to express something, 
write it in poetry if you're not ready to fully express it exactly how it's supposed to be yeah yeah that's a brilliant brilliant tip for anyone who's like scared to talk about even if you're scared to talk about something in the sense of like if you put it on paper and someone else finds it you'd be like mortified or something if you literally start writing poetry about your shit yeah no one will even know what you're talking about but you're expressing it at the same time that's like half my music (laughs) (laughs) no it's just like i i look at like multi-linear for example but i see you evolved a little bit throughout the process because you're doing songs like suicide stuck you know and and stuff like that which is definitely a lot more this is exactly what it is yeah i don't i don't know if that song would have been released on multi-linear now that i know a little bit more context Mm, yeah i'd say you're right yeah i agree so have been slowly evolving as an artist to be more of like vulnerable to to the public Mm, yeah a bit more open without the the veils (laughs) a bit less veils without the veils (laughs) Nice, brother. All right, man. Well, I have like a million questions about this for us, so I'm going to hop into it. All right. So did you have a mental goal uh, that you wanted to achieve while out in the forest? Yeah, I essentially just wanted to clear my mind as much as possible. That, That was goal number one. There was no goals in terms of getting anything done. Just get to a space from which I can get things done, which I guess is the same thing, but just a different way of working at it. Like I just wanted to be completely free of all those thoughts of achieving anything and just in the space of silence and just being aware of where I'm at so that I can move most appropriately from that space forward. So what you talk about achieving things, what are certain things that you have yet to achieve? Um, it's not the yet to achieve, but just things I know I have to still do. And that's just release a bunch more albums like i have so many whole concepts to albums that are like half done and it takes a lot of time to do them and i and i can't do them when i'm focused on trying to get them done it's a weird paradox i have to just be in the state of just constantly creating and like engaging with people like like even this right now i have to just be doing this rather than thinking about getting stuff done because the thinking about getting stuff done leads me more into that world of the future which disconnects me from now and then i can't actually act properly Mm. okay that's that's yeah that makes a lot of sense Mm. so while you were out in the forest what was your first 24 hours like (laughs) pretty easy to be honest if yeah the start was easy it didn't actually really get hard until about There was about, oh, yeah, so it was 10 days, and it was at about the five-day mark. I had to, like, I literally drove out of the forest for a bit, like, back towards the city for, like, a night because, like, I couldn't handle it. But the up until that point, like, I was pretty, the first three days was, like, felt really good just to be away from everything when I knew that whatever responsibilities I had were just not to worry about, you know? I made sure that everything was settled first. And then after that, like fifth day of like freaking out for a moment and then driving back it was just like the same again like three four five days pretty good and then it was just like the second last day i could feel my mind kind of going a bit crazy but ultimately it was pretty peaceful just the whole time (laughs) wait interesting so there was a time that you left yeah and did, did you how did you how did you speak and tell the the people that you were leaving oh, i didn't <laughs> i just yeah i just went out the back you know what i mean i didn't let anyone know yeah mm. oh so did you just go back for a night and then you came back in the morning because you yeah I, I believe you expressed that you had to wake up early in the morning yeah exactly yeah we're waking up six every morning like you were supposed to wait well, not supposed to there was the actual schedule started at four in the morning but the four to six was non-compulsory and because my sleep schedule was already so fucked, I was just aiming to get up at that six, hey. And I've, yeah, I've been waking up consistently in the AM, which is good because I had not been doing that prior. <laughs> yeah. So how, like, what, what do you think was like the thing that finally made you be like, okay, wait, I just want to go out into the city. Need a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, let me think for a moment. Actually, I, I might have written it down here. I wrote like twelve pages in this fucking book while i was away the journal from the 
retreat? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Actually, I don't... <sighs> it's hard to say, hey, it was like the... Like, when you're alone for long enough... But, and not not so much alone, but the inability to speak and this and the talking like that. Like usually, I'm when even when I'm alone, I'm talking out loud, thinking about things, like talking to myself, and that kind of helps me process. And so I was kind of like noticing myself get to the point where not being able to express my thoughts out loud, they were just building up in my mind, and I almost couldn't like. It was the, it was a it's hard to explain, but it's a feeling kind of like. Like, th I have these scars here, these tattoo, it's like tattoo ink in like little cuts. Yeah. And it's like when I feel like doing them, it's like this kind of like dis-ease and anxiety within myself. But it's like over like my thoughts and my inability to see clearly through them. And so it kind of got to that point, not being able to express them out loud, that I would see how muddy my mind was just on that final the final day before I went home for a break and then also the final day when I came home at the very end, I was noticing that happening. <clears throat> and I think that's just, that's part of like what I was saying in terms of like seeing myself a bit more clearly to know how to move forward. Like I don't think I was even aware of how much I think and I already thought that I thought a lot. But this just showed me how much clearer like I'm actually constantly in motion in my mind and I need to actually express that otherwise i go a bit crazy <laughs> so what were like what were the main thoughts that you had throughout the trip mm. the main thoughts was just becoming aware of how reliant on my like thinking about stuff is and uh, kind of that in itself being like one of these addictions that I have and becoming more aware that I have all these addictions which I don't want to have. So it was like, yeah, in increasing awareness of the situation I'm actually in. Say for example with the weed, like I, I knew I was addicted to weed but I didn't know like, I just didn't know what to do about it essentially. And um... In that sense, I was not moving forward. Like, I wasn't even kind of accepting that, like, I have this thing to to move past. But when I was out there, like, I was becoming more aware that these addictions I have are actually, like, hindrances. They hinder me from acting in the world. Like, I want to be able to talk to people. I want to be able to play shows. And I was realizing that all these addictions are actually taking away from what I want to be giving to the world. So that was like one of the main realizations and kind of thoughts I kept having that I wanted to like free myself from these addictions and hindrances so that I can better give. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think in like regards to the weed in particular? Well, how do you feel like that was hindering uh, you? Like, for example, performing shows or talking to people? Was it the anxiety building up? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. That That's just it. The anxiety. And what I, yeah. Would you be like a paranoid smoke? Like when you would smoke, would you get paranoid? No. So what I would do, this is, and this is only like a subtle thing that I only realized recently as well. So I would smoke to relieve my anxiety and it would relieve my anxiety. I've never been really paranoid. But then afterwards, like there would be an increasing kind of tendency to reli keep reliving that feeling of anxiety lessness because it would only, it would last for a very short period that um release from anxiety and i'm realizing now because whatever is causing that anxiety is like within me and i need to sort that out and the and the weed was only ever just kind of keeping my awareness away from that for short periods of time rather than letting me face it head on which again was what was happening on this retreat like i would get i would get like three four days in and without having that heavy of marijuana to kind of suppress things, I would become aware of all the shit in my mind, which otherwise I would have been distracting myself from. So do you feel like you're 100% capable to face all the, all these things that you have in a way been neglecting or distracting yourself from? 
are the I am capable with the support of my of the sangha of the world by which I mean everyone in my life if I can support those people with my efforts and they continue to support me then we can do anything yes 100% Sounds good. Yeah, no, definitely. De definitely. I can see that. Especially in like, right in this, this coming moment, I feel like you're going through that transition, like from Frieza 2 to uh, Frieza 3, which is his final, or I think that's his final one. But, uh, but yeah, definitely that transformation is in the process and like yeah. you're taking the steps forward. And even so like just the, to... even just the talks we're having now, like usually if we'd ever had a talk this long, I'm just going to, oh, I'm not going to check because we're, we're looking good on the screen here, but this has been like probably 20 minutes at least. If we'd been talking this long a month ago, I would have already been smoking billies in this conversation. Like you can attest to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There'd be times where I, it was just like, I didn't, I didn't understand it because like, if I smoked one of those, I would be gone for like 17 hours, you yeah. know, <laughs> wake, sleep, wake up the next day and still be like on that level. <laughs> so <laughs> I can attest to But you function completely fine. And I think that was maybe the problem as well, because no, I can never tell like you, yeah. you're just the same exact person. Mm, I know that's because I, yeah, I, yeah, it's hard to explain because I wasn't even an addict for that long. I was like a couple years. Some people, smoke, well, I mean, I guess it only takes a certain period, but some people, yeah, they smoke for years and they don't handle it as well as I do. I think it's in my blood. I've got like marijuana blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Raz, one of the things that you talked about in uh, this channel, right when you came back was about technology. So yeah. my question to you is, how did it feel to be away from technology? good no legit there was not really any takeaway like any drawback i i just felt less not only less distracted but just more at peace like i you know sometimes you'll like go to your i notice already like i'm starting to do it again like if i'm not doing anything in the moment i'll be like oh let's just check my phone to see if i've got any any notifications or anything but like out there after a day or two you're just not doing that which means every time you kind of you, re you have like a free moment, which is a lot of the time, you just kind of realize like, oh, I can do anything right now. You know, I could read, I could meditate, I could go for a walk, you know, you just become aware of so much more space when you don't have all of these. Yeah, there's a lot more space. Yeah, those, those clean. What do you think out of all the things of technology is the one that holds you deeper into the world than anything else? Um, ask that question again. So pretty much like what out of all the technological like advances, whether it be Instagram, you know, Twitter, YouTube, um, corn, uh, you know, any of the things that, that, uh, that I've listed or any of the other technological advances, which one holds you down the most into like the earth? Cause I know like you and I, we talk about that spiritual quest that we're on you know, to, to, you know, to achieve certain things that uh, many people just neglect. But what do you think is that one thing that's just, it's just hard, you know, is it Instagram or? I was going to say that the main thing would be, I guess, Instagram, because that's the one through which I find, well, I was going to say I find the most power through that. I, I would say simultaneously YouTube I do, but I need to explain the difference. There's a lot of power in Instagram because you get to talk directly with individuals one on one as well as like the live chat and everything but it's it's there's so much of that direct interaction with people whether that's text or through the audio and that's something which is like necessary for moving forward yeah. in terms of just everything and so yeah. that's why it's hard because I you need to be on there and it's like regularly checking that to see who's there to be interacted with but at the same time for me at least there's like too many people to interact with at any one time where in, unless I'm like super focused and knowing what I need to achieve like I don't know where to start like I don't know who to interact with I don't know like I need to have that kind of purpose in mind but um YouTube is similar but not so much like YouTube's one of the really good assets in the sense that you can learn pretty much anything but it's just scary in terms of all the fucking suggestions because 
Yeah. You, you don't need like 95% of the things you get suggested that you even click on. Like you, you go to YouTube, You I would hope to find something specific out. And then once you've got that specific thing, like maybe you could learn more on the subject, but like other than that, you're just learning kind of aimlessly. No, definitely. And I, I'm sure that a lot of us, we go on there with nothing in specific in mind, or even if we do, they always give us the suggestion bar, which has like five other things that either we clicked on before or that we might be interested in. And even if we're not, the thumbnails are definitely a gravitating force. Well, dude, that's the scary thing where it gets us to the point where we're so used to being fed kind of instant gratification from it that we go to things like YouTube and Instagram when we don't even have anything in mind to use them for. We're just like, oh, I want that hit, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. uh, insidious hmm. so can you share the benefits because i know that you you kind of shared a little bit of, of what you weren't so pleased about about the silence but can you share the benefits of being silent for so long so the, the benefit was kind of just the other side of the downside in the sense that like not being able to speak out loud or anything it was all my thoughts were getting crammed in my head and that was kind of driving me crazy but at the same time going through that process it allowed me to become aware of the fact that i have all these thoughts much more clearly and that these thoughts drive me crazy unless i don't express them so it's again just a, a much deeper clarity of what this experience is right now also let me just ask you quickly how how do you reckon we should add a, like a halfway point pause this and then just make sure what we've got is saved and then continue from yes, that point on we can do that yes let's right. do that let's right. do that let me know when you're like halfway through the questions oh okay oh, unless you want oh, to do so that now yet. okay we'll do it now all right be right back no no I'm, I'm not i'm like i'm not halfway through the question that's but. all right we can go <laughs> through like we can put it in like three different sections i just want to make sure this is recording hey just to make sure okay, all right sounds good